with the, the spend, though, because as you said, you're also mindful of that inflationary impact. Have you been able to take enough out to balance the money that you're putting in? Because in simple terms, that's what we're seeing, isn't it? You've got the RBA taking money out of the economy. They really want the government to be taking money out as well, to be cooling the economy right now. Have you got that? Well, I think we've. You, that's been one of the things front and centre of our decisions. You know, I think Jim and I have been saying for for months, in fact, since we came to government, that the inflation challenge is the one we are focused on. Um, obviously, the way it's been playing out, significant cost of living pressures on households as well. So we have been trying to find the balance of how can you alleviate some of those pressures, not add to inflation, repair the budget, um, look for savings, and I think that's part of the story as well. So, you know, we've found an additional $17.8 in savings in this budget that could go to re being reprioritised. Is that um, enough? Is that enough, given how much is going back? Well, I mean... Because, you know, the people that are, are getting it, whether it be job seekers, single parents, and, and no one would begrudge them being receiving or being lifted out of poverty, but all those dollars will be spent, won't they? Well, that's uh, certainly the evidence would show that if you increase payments to low-income households, they spend the majority of that, well, their income mm. on meeting cost of living pressures. But we've been mindful of that. So I think wait and see what the budget, how it all comes together. I've, you know, the budget isn't one decision in isolation. It's hundreds, if not thousands, of decisions that work together to land the final document. And yes, we've got cost of living pressure. We've got to look at what we're doing about future opportunities and you know, making sure that Australians get a, get a crack at those. We've got to look at budget repair. We've got to be mindful of inflation. It's, it's been a challenge. This is my first full budget, um, but it's been months and months of meetings and decisions, hard decisions, easier decisions, yeah. the whole mix. It's all done and dusted now. and, and your uh, friend Jim Chalmers is just finalising his speech now, but are you, are you confident that you're consistent and in line with what the RBA is doing? Well, that's, been, that's informed our decision making. I mean, I'll let others commentate on, on what they think about it once it's released, but we have been very mindful of decisions that don't add to inflation. Uh, we don't want to make their job harder, but there are, as you know, um, on your show all the time, calls from everywhere about much needed investments uh, from the Commonwealth budget. And we've had to, you know, find that sweet spot in balancing those out. Because, it, it, you know, whether it be the energy bills or whatever else, again, no one begrudges those, that assistance being provided, but it, it is inflationary, isn't it? In the, in the sense that you're putting more dollars in people's pockets. So the Treasury might say, OK, the direct immediate impact is CPI down, but those dollars will be, will be spent eventually. So does it make their job harder in the, the medium to longer term? A longer period of reduction of rates? Well, the budget will outline all the forecasts that we have around inflation and wages and employment, and that will be mindful of the decisions we've taken in this budget. That will incorporate those decisions. And we've been clear that we don't want to make the Reserve Bank jobs harder, but there are calls on the budget yeah. to, to make sensible investments. I think it's about how you roll them out and the targeting of those investments it has something to do with it. But also, again, the budget repair story is a big one as well. You know, not spending all of the anywhere near the revenue upgrades than we've seen in previous um, administrations. You know, being cautious yeah. and showing restraint there is part of it. Showing the saving side um, is part of it. And also how you shape the future opportunities. You know, productivity is an issue. You know, actually seizing some of the opportunities in a net zero world, you know, are so important for jobs for the future for our kids. So, mm. you know, the budget is so many different decisions all trying to align and pull in the same direction. Yeah, huge, uh, huge tasks, there's no doubt. Do you, do you feel that, and I don't expect you to give me a number or anything, but with, with the, the, light, you know, the surplus, we expect a surplus to be there, will that end the coalition critique on Labor that they, you can't manage the budget or economy? Well, I'm sure they'll work out some criticism, um, knowing, knowing the kind of engagement we have, but I think what Jim and I, and it's a, I guess a different answer to that question, I would put it a different way, which is 
we, Jim and I are determined, and the Prime Minister, who's been very clear on this, about ensuring that people see we take managing their money really respons uh, responsibly. You know, like it's important to us. Fiscal discipline is important. Say, saying no is a big part of my job. Um, sometimes that's really hard, but we have to ensure to people who are doing it tough that they can see they've got a government that tries to balance up all the competing pressures, but ultimately they know that we are are doing the right thing by them and their budget. And uh, on the PRRT, the Petroleum Resource Rent Tax, the gas industry has welcomed the move. The Greens have described these as the... This is Nick McKim. He says, to describe them as the barest minimum would be significantly overstating what they achieved. These are terrible changes that will make next to no difference to an utterly cooked PRRT system. That's the Greens spokesperson. Mm. Could you have gone harder? Well, I, I mean, we work with the Greens, but I don't think that's any surprise um, to hear that feedback from them. Uh, I think what you've seen is us, again, finding the balance between getting a return to the budget so we can invest in cost of living, um, ensure investment, ongoing investment in gas supply domestically, and making sure our international relationships and commitments are adhered to. Um, the Greens don't have to worry about those sorts of things. They're never in government, so they can throw stones from the sideline. But when you're in government, you've got to weigh up a whole range of competing issues as you make decisions. And this will bring $2.4 billion into the budget. It'll, it'll help. It'll be a big help. Katie Gallagher, Finance Minister, thanks. So nice, a busy week for you. I appreciate you making the time. Thanks. Great to talk with you, Kieran.